But if the bank is somehow culpable and has some liability here, well, then they they need to step up and uh, repay and compensate these farmers for these losses. But anyhow, joining us now uh, in the studio, the lieutenant governor of the great state of Mississippi, Delbert Hoseman. Governor, thanks for coming on, sir. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, and I was listening to your comments. Um, I've been up in the Delta recently, and this is catastrophic uh, for just about everybody around Greenwood, Mississippi. And um, it permeates uh, the fact that this horrific loss has been incurred up there, depending on who you talk to, 50 or $100 million. It's just a staggering amount of money. Probably one of the biggest losses we've ever had in Mississippi that wasn't caused by a hurricane or something. But when you look at that, uh, it permeates the rest of the economics of the Delta. I mean, people don't buy a machine. They don't get their stuff repaired. They don't make donations to charity. I mean, everything that comes out of having a very successful farming year uh, is impacted by this. This 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 is not a small issue here. It's not. And and uh, Governor, I know you are a uh, an experienced lawyer here and and you and i've had some full disclosure some mm-hmm. some uh legal done some legal work for us through mm-hmm. the years but so what's the deal here governor when you got a bank it appears yeah. at least allegedly that's what the the lawyer for the class action the class of farmers is suing they're encouraging essentially their customer to well we'll just wait until you have some assets on the books here and then we're going to come at you and yeah, enforce the default on September the 23rd right when everybody's unloaded all of their soybeans corn and everything else we're going to swoop in and take all of the assets right so um, I'm very concerned about that we're, we are looking at legislation um, concerning this for going on a go forward basis uh, we've met with um, farmers there with uh, different uh, industries groups that may represent them about what the state can do we've got a meeting coming up this next week again to make sure this doesn't happen again that being said um the ones that have been harmed this year around the greenwood area is is devastating and we had i'm like you i listened to um attorney don barrett's discussion about that and about individuals crying in his office and whatnot about that that they're going to lose everything they work for it's it's just horrific i mean it is a horrific thing that has happened to us and how how it got there i guess the bankruptcy and the lawyers will work that out um the only thing i think we can do at this point is make sure it doesn't happen again yeah i mean and at this point as you know in filing chapter 11 uh the 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 vendors here that would be the farmers Mm -hmm. really can't do anything no, I mean, and, and their assets are are just being wiped out here a little bit more at a time, whatever assets there would, would be uh, if they, you know, sell whatever's up there. Yeah, it is it is an, an unholy mess. Mm, mm, mm. Have uh, you given any thought to how the state might be able to provide some degree of assistance with, uh, short of just legislation here? Right. We, we, we looked at that. Um, this is happening post, you know, obviously these are post losses, so it's harder to do. And uh, we don't have any statutory scheme in which to reimburse people for losses. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the same thing would apply to restaurants during sure. COVID and everything sure. else. If the federal government comes up with a plan, that would be good. Uh, there are some loan plans that are there, but uh, most uh, we haven't been able to come up with any way uh, to make people whole. This litigation may make them whole, yeah. uh, which may be our, our best way to get back to somewhere near normal. But from there, I think most of our work right now is to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Sure, These elevators, some of them are federal and get audited quite often others are state run um i think there may be about 50 of them and uh this has happened before uh in arkansas and in uh, louisiana um you know it's a very complicated business that they're buying and selling on futures markets and you know it's very difficult i mean you got to be pretty sophisticated to run one of these it's not just empty in a truck yeah and so when they do all of that there's there there are problems. There could be problems with um, just making bad economic decisions, and you can't insure against that. Right. But this one seems to be more calculated to harm our people, and I'm, yeah. I'm very hopeful that that litigation will find a favorable result. Well, it's it sounds to me, and I, I don't know, again, I said said this, if any laws were broken, but, it, but if there's some sort of 
corroboration going on between yeah. a financial institution and their customer, essentially, yeah. uh, their debtor. Uh, that seems like there should be some illegal illegality involved there. And then I wonder, uh, Governor, is that something our attorney general should step in and address? I, I, I expect that they're looking at this. I haven't because it's uh, you cross that line when you get into a, a criminal versus a civil action. Yeah. So I have not been in any discussions about that and intend to stay out of that. Uh, but you start moving around a lot of federal monies by wire and bank transfers. And, of course, the banks were furnishing these farmers. And there's no money for them either. Right. Uh, so, uh, it, it, like I say, it, it has a ripple yeah. effect, but it's r- more in, in the Greenwood area, like a tsunami effect. And very, very difficult. And I'll, I'll leave up to the Attorney General what, what statutory gotcha. problems they got. Well, you know, I, I con- I'm i concerned, and I know you share this concern, is how are they able to even bounce back and function in the next season, <laughs> you know, when you go and you've pledged all your land and or whatever, and you you got it. Well, we, even those that are tenants, and they uh, pledged all of their assets to pay off a loan. Now they've got a loan for hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars, some of them, and they have no asset. Right. I mean, they've got their tractors and and their goodwill and hard work, and that's about it. Yeah. Farmers are the biggest gamblers in the world. No question. Every year they bet the farm, literally, and in this case. It was taken away from them, and I, I, I think it's horrific. We'll keep an eye on it and appreciate you uh, you commenting on that, uh, Governor, because it's a big thing. It's a, it's a big thing in the state of Mississippi, and uh, we can't let this happen again, that's for sure. No. And, and hopefully we can we can get some legislation that will, uh, I guess, have some teeth in it that, that would yeah. uh, prevent this. But anyhow, we'll like, like we said, we'll keep an eye on it. I was up in Tupelo yesterday, and... Uh, you know, I talked about this at the top of the show, Governor. The state of Mississippi, uh, in all corners and all across it, we're just blessed with a lot of great people. And when I go in these these businesses and work with these entrepreneurs, it is so rewarding and so heartwarming. Uh, great people work their rears off, and they just want government to stay the hell out of their way. And we seem to have an administration in Washington that is hell bent on getting more in their way. <laughs> Uh, and so I, I worry about that uh, a- anyhow. But we'll segue into we got this big chunk of money coming mm-hmm. down. And I, honestly, I've said that on the program before that uh, I kind of have mixed feelings about that. On the one hand, we could get a lot of good things done for the state of Mississippi. On the other hand, we're just uh, kicking the can down the road with respect to our mm-hmm. debt and our liability and, and the inflationary aspect of pumping all this money into the account, mm-hmm. economy. But we got $1.8 billion. I understand that some subcommittees or a subcommittee has mm-hmm. been meeting on this and, and getting ready. What What's the latest on well, that? Well, where we are, the um, and you're exactly right, I, I didn't ask for this money, but it's here. I think it's our job at the legislature and uh, in the House and the Senate to make sure we spend it well. And I want that to be transformational. I don't want it to be one or two years. I want it to be one or two generations. I'm thinking about my grandchildren and your, and your children. Yeah. And I'll go through what the hearings are. I hear, I hear yeah, your Yeah, we got a break up. right here. Yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to go through where we are and what we're looking at. Sounds good. Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hoseman is our guest in the Super Talk studios. Middays will be right. Is Gerard and Rhino in the studio and also in with us, uh, the Lieutenant Governor of Mississippi, Delbert Hoseman. So, all right, so we were talking about this $1.8 billion. You didn't ask for it. You got it. You're right. And a bunch of money went out to the cities and counties. They did, $900 million. Yeah, as well. I think uh, the mayor of Tupelo told me yesterday, we say four and a half million, I think, is what the city of Tupelo got. Yeah. And is the, the county figure. got about 20, I think. Up Lee there. County. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So you, you've had a subcommittee mm-hmm. that's been uh, working through uh, yeah. how to spend. And so we're not going to have any kind of conflict. Are we between the legislature, the governor's office, on who's responsible for allocating this money? Is no, that, is no, that it, uh, it comes out of the uh, comes out of the legislature. There's no conflict there. Um, what we're looking at doing is having everybody apply for these monies. Our position in the Senate side, uh, can you speak for the House? I have to speak to the Speaker. But on the Senate side, we want to match the money that goes in the ground. Okay. So I have been I've met with supervisors all over Mississippi and, and uh, Municipal League and all these others and told them, look, y'all save your money that you got from the federal government. Y'all got $900 million, We got $1.8 billion. We'll match whatever money you put in the ground. And by that, I mean goes into water, sewer, and, and broadband. 
um, if they want to use some of the money for a, uh, a raise for their employees or something, that's fine. I mean, it certainly they all need raises, but that's a one-time expense, Gerard. Yeah. And I'm more interested in having a longer time, like uh, making sure we got our industrial parks uh, ready, making sure you got safe water, drinking water for people. Rural water associations have applied for you know hundreds of millions of dollars to bring our rural water associations up to speed now. Mm-hmm. So there's a um, there's in my own mind, I, I want, like I said, I want it to be more than one or two years. A uh, pay raise is needed, uh, certainly in the inflationary times that we've got right here. And I, I want to talk about inflation in a second. But uh, but I, I really want to have this one-time money be matched by our, our, our side, the legislative side, and have it all go into this long-term water sewer and things that we need that are crumbling really in most of our cities. Okay. So I think that's the most important thing. So, so just to, to kind of uh, inform our, our audience, the, the bill itself, the money coming from the federal government, it does have some stated parameters and, very, and restrictions so. on where yep. the money can be spent. That's correct. Water infrastructure is, is a key one. Water, sewer, broadband. Broadband, <laughs> yep. And, and so what you're talking about um, is, is do- doling that out at the city and county level, mm-hmm. but with some sort of a contribution right. well, from those entities. Right, where they got $900 million and we got $1.8 billion, I so I was going to match their $900 million. We, You know, some of them yep. have used it for other things, but yep. let's just assume they used $700 million for water and sewer out around Mississippi. Well, we were going to match $700 million to put $1.4 billion in the ground. And so uh, that that is the basis for us for our houses. That's our our small businesses. That's our industrial parks. That's uh, everything we want. You've got to have the correct water and, and sewer provision. So I thought this this was a chance to make a monumental leap forward, not only in repairs and on um, things that need to be repaired, like Jackson's or whatever. Yeah. But also in. Uh, when I talk with the cities and the counties, I talk about where do your growth, where's your growth going? Uh, you know, let's build out that way so that you really are, are planning for the future. This is where my industrial park, this is where my new subdivision is going to be. Those kinds of things that we're planning out forward instead of just reactive when uh, we have to spend a whole lot more money to, and we don't dictate really the pace of, in, of, uh, of development. So I'm very hopeful. Uh, they've been very receptive. I met with the Tupelo group speaking to them yesterday. They have a council of governments, and uh, all the mayors were there, and the supervisors were there, and we went through this very process, really on a line by line basis. You know, where do you need your wastewater treatment plant? Where do you need this? And there were some requests I don't think uh, qualified uh, under the federal guidelines, so we wouldn't be able to use it for that. But I think we could really do well in that county and Lee County with uh, matching contributions. Based on the feedback that you've received Mm -hmm. is it uh i I guess does it uh have they said this is enough to address all of our needs for some period of time we need more no no, or is is this about right not enough too much i think we got seven billion dollars worth of requests for (laughs) 1.8 billion money so that's i knew that was coming seven yeah so we are going to have to prioritize it you're right i mean we're going to have to make some decisions that yeah we think yours is ready and uh, we want to put this out over a period of time. We don't want to try to do everything this year because you basically couldn't even do all the work this year. Yeah. So we want to have an organized approach over the next year or two to have these funds matched. And then we will pay on reimbursement. That would be our proposal. That, yeah. You know, as you as you get your stuff ready and you get your environmental study or whatever you got to have done at that county or city level, that we then come back and when you start construction, we start paying on a reimbursement model. Gotcha. All right, uh, let's pivot a bit here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can't let you out of here without telling us what you think about this medical marijuana stuff. I know you've had yeah. S- Senator Blackwell working on that with yeah. uh, Representative Lee Yancey over in yeah. the House side. I've seen the governor talk about it several times. Mm-hmm. But what's your feel for it at this point? Well, we um, we sent every, uh, every county sheriff a copy of the bill probably a month and a half ago and asked for their input. I've met with a couple of them. I think our, our, our senators have met with a lot of them. Um, we've met with just about everybody we could meet with. I don't, I don't know of any other legislation, quite frankly, in the 12 or 14 years that I've been around that has ever been as scrutinized as this. <laughs> so we are going to have a medical marijuana bill. I mean, 70 or 65, 70 percent, whatever, voted for that. We are not going to have a recreational marijuana bill. 
Uh, people didn't vote for that, and there's no, there's no movement in the legislature to do that. So what you'll see is a strict medical marijuana bill where, where you can take from the time it's put in the ground as a seed, and it will, those will all be indoor so we can track mm-hmm. them. It won't be just outdoors like Oklahoma's got a disaster going on over there. Mm-hmm. It'll be indoors. We'll track the seed to where, where it is consumed. And uh, the tax at the end is like 7%. And there's a 5% excise tax in the middle. And, and, and there are restrictions on who can grow it and how you get licensed to uh, be a grower. All of that will go, come about. Uh, I think that this legislation, as I said, has been vetted more than any other. And so I think it's going to come out early in the session. And uh, hopefully we'll put it to bed. But it's, um, it'll be a... A, there's a provision in there that no city or county has has to even have this. If they want to opt out, they'll have like three or four months, I think 120 days. They yeah. can just opt out and have no no kind of marijuana, medical marijuana in their city or their county. So we've left it open to Mississippians to decide again at their own local level whether they want to fool with this at all. So I, I think it'll come out. Uh, we've got another meeting coming up next week for final revisions from senators and whatnot. But I think early in the session that bill will come out, and it looks to me like it will pass. The governor is uh, certainly set stating that he has uh, lots of reservations and, and uh, just heartburn with the, the quantity, the amount mm-hmm. that can be purchased. And I've seen him talk about that a couple of times now. And if that's not adjusted, he's set to veto it unless he sent a veto-proof bill. Mm-hmm. He's a governor. He gets to do vetoes. Sure. You know, we're the legislature. We get to pass. The uh, We have reduced the size that you can obtain to the equivalent of about, I think, eight cigarettes a week or something. So I guess if you smoked them all in one hour, it might might work. But, uh, no, we've restricted. I think we have the most restricted amount of distribution of any state, if I'm not mistaken, I'll, I'll have to check back on that. Okay. But I know we re, we have reduced it to down to where it's just n- not very much at all. He he says it's 11 a day, and I and I don't know, that's and I don't want to get into that's that. That's not accurate. I think he was reading maybe um, um, a summary or something, but okay. that's that's not accurate. And I will send the governor a copy as well. But I'm I'm hopeful he'll join in after he looks at all the revisions. And we we sent it to him, as you remember, um, probably back in September or so. And we asked him for his comments. We got about, I think we got about seven or eight of them. We put about six of them, I think, in the bill, which is very unusual, you know, to ask the governor to participate on the front end. So yeah. I'm very hopeful that he'll see that the majority of the issues that he raised uh, were were addressed by the legislature. We got a couple of minutes. What, yeah. uh, what's else on your radar? Oh, we got a lot coming up. We start January the 4th. Uh, we just did our budget, $6.493 um, billion dollars. Um, we is a, it, it was a $563 million more. We actually appropriated $5.8 billion. Those appropriations were done by the Legislative Budget Office. There's $500 million that was not appropriated that can be spent, and, of course, those will be, a lot of those will be spent, or some, some of it certainly will be spent on a teacher pay raise. And then we've got um, a lot of other issues. So you'll see uh, we've downsized the government by about 2,500 different employees, a lot, of, a lot of real positive things, but it's very. We have more money than we've ever had in Mississippi, and uh, I'm very, I'm very committed to making sure we spend that well. And I think the members of the Senate and the House are too. Got you. I know you're busy. You got to go. I assume. Right? I know we got to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> Back to work. We appreciate. We appreciate that. Lunch too. <laughs> with Gerard is it was great, but it was no food. I don't understand it. Where's my sandwich? We appreciate you coming on, it's good uh, to Governor. See you. Always appreciate good to all see your you hard too. work. Keep in touch. M- yes, sir. Merry Christmas uh, to you and your family. Thank you. Yep. We'll take a break right here on middays. We'll come right back. 